Now here you have the process that's the beautiful process that actually creates a, a new human brain being out of this whole uh, process that we've been talking about. Fertilization. Now the beauty about fertilization is that a random egg meets a random sperm and that each of those eggs and they went a random processes of crossing over and separation of homologs and that makes each one of us be unique and each one of us have a blended not a blended a mixture of information coming from both our parents and their parents and so but fertilization is a very important because it, it, it restores uh, diploidy which is what we need for adult uh, organisms and multicellular animals. So the role of fertilization is to, is to both uh, create a, a varied organism and also to restore diploidy. Because remember, the cells were haploid, but why did they have to be haploid? Otherwise, when fertilization happened, you would have twice the genetic material. Remember that it, when fertilization happens, two N cells combine to restore a two N diploid cell. But if you were to get a diploid cell and combine with another diploid cell, it would be 4 N cell. And then the other generation, there will be an 8 N cell and then a 16 N cell. And eventually, all the cell would be is a bunch of DNA and it will be not be sustainable. So, that you need those haploid cells. You need meiosis to create this haploid cell. You also need meiosis to create variety, as we talked about doing uh, the separation of homologs and crossing over and things like that. Um, also, if you think about it, why is it that you have different genders? Why not just have uh, any, any two members of the species connecting to make a, a variability? Well, the difference in genders actually for, for makes a, um, sexual reproduction uh, mandatory. In other words, genders actually may, are a part of sexual reproduction in the sense that it actually fosters the interchange or exchange of information with people of different things. Otherwise, you could literally fertilize yourself, right? So the gender differences actually enhance the possibility of interchange or the mixing of genes through sexual reproduction with a different organism. And that actually enhances the variability of the population and it, it speeds up the evolutionary process, which is why it's so, so more common in nature, because it ex makes evolution explode. And we talk about that when we talk about the evolution of sex on a, a later chapter of the year. Now, why is it so unlikely for gametes of the same gender to, to meet? Well, sperm cannot fertilize sperm because, because it, it's actually not big enough. It doesn't have the nutrients necessary to grow into a zygote and actually become, uh, to form a zygote if they were to co combine and actually form a being out of that. So they don't have the organelles, they don't have anything that's necessary to actually grow a being. What about two eggs? Well, they theoretically could meet, but the problem is that the, the cold protective layer of the egg can only be pierced by the acrosome enzymes present in the, in the sperm. And so when you look at that, you, wouldn't, you, would, necess you would not have the... Um, the uh, fertilization taking place, which is why you have these different gametes. And remember, the whole point is to enhance, force the organisms to, to, to mate with someone other than themselves. And, and then that way, increase the variety of the population and make evolution work a lot faster, which is why it actually creates more variability, more adaptability, and basically creates a, a better chances for life to survive. And that's why sexual reproduction is so common. Now, what is fertilization, actually? Well, obviously, you're going to have all these sperm trying to get into the egg. Now, notice that in order for that to happen successfully, uh, the egg must be fertilized close to the actual ovulation at the ovary. So the ovary, the egg will grow into the fo follicle, and it will become bigger and bigger. And then the follicle will eventually pop, uh, as uh, we talked about in the other video, as a consequence of stimulation by the pituitary hormones. And then it will make this egg. Now, this egg must be properly fertilized soon into the fallopian tubes somewhere here if the egg is fertilized too late it will not grow fast enough to implant into endometrial uterine wall that was prepared for it during the menstrual cycle so that's why the actual fertile time is before the way before the actual menstrual uh, cycle not the days right before it but the, uh, actually a week before that is because the sperm has to travel all the way into the egg, which is, has to be around here somewhere, and there will be days until the egg actually hits this part. And then, meanwhile, the egg is actually undergoing division. It's actually becoming already in the process of becoming a being. And so, in order for this to to be to be happening there, um, 
you can even stop this process even after fertilization if you were to get uh, a certain medication that will actually force the egg to to fail implantation or actually kill off the egg before the uh, fertilization took place and that is actually the day after pill things like that that's what it's for but either way the fertilization has to happen deep in within the fallopian tubes otherwise that this will not happen that's one key thing that we have to talk about also notice how it actually happens that little by little the, the sperm has to pierce the outer layer of protection that is around the egg notice that it has this corona radiata which is a bunch of cells around the egg they come from the ovaries they're produced in order to protect the egg and help with the implantation of the egg versus the uterine wall and notice that it then it has this zona pellucia which is the, the actual protection that the egg or the jelly layer that the egg actually has to protect and then it has a plasma membrane and then eventually the nucleus that's coming from the egg is going to f merge with the nucleus from the the ovum and actually create the new zygote nucleus that's a 2n nucleus and that's what's happening on the inside of the of the egg now notice that in order for this to happen all the mitochondrial material in the tail can never go inside none of the organelles go inside the only thing that goes inside uh, the only thing that uh, pierces that pollution or that jelly coat is the actual head now the acrosome that we talk about will protrude and basically drill with, with enzymes the protective layer and actually pierce the membrane with the assistance of an actual uh, in, inner membrane thing called cortical granule, all right? And as soon as that, that, that piercing takes place, that cortical granule will react with the plasma membrane and create a very, very thick layer here that can't not be pierced by the acrosome. Notice that. That layer was not there before, but as soon as the piercing takes place, the acrosome finally gets through and it will react with the cortical granule to create a, a layer that is actually so, so strong that other sperm cannot, cannot pierce it. And that means that only one sperm is going to be successful at getting inside. And that's the magic of this. You make sure the organism is not going to be a 3N organism, and which does happen sometimes, but that fails, you know. Uh, if the system fails, then you're going to have three or four sperms getting inside the egg, and then this, the egg will fail because it won't be diploid. It will be multiploid, polyploid. Now, <clears throat> that is the beauty of fertilization, and that's how it happens. Now, after fertilization takes place, this egg is going to have to be developed, and the next step is actual implantation. Now, after fertilization takes place, the next stage is going to be implantation. Now, during implantation... The, the, the egg is actually have to, going to have to be developed, so that means it's going to go from the from being a zygote to being an actual embryo. Remember, as soon as it becomes a 2N, it's called a zygote. But then that zygote will start to split and to become an embryo. And then <clears throat> this embryo will have to attach itself to the endometrium wall of the, of the thing. And it, it's a very complex process, which I'm not going to get into much detail. It involves surface proteins of the, uh, or glycoproteins in the surface of the, of the egg which will then attach to a specific surface proteins in the endometrium wall but the whole point of it is that after the egg implants it actually when well, you see actual pictures of that happening here it will actually induce uh, through hormones the formation of the placental wall and then eventually this will develop into the actual uh, structure of the growing fetuses that we talked about and this is actually very complicated and there's a whole class you take just about this whole process but I just wanted to show you uh, the sequential aspects that take place. You don't need to know this in much, too much detail. But also notice that the, a piece of the egg, which was uh, the, called an amniotic cavity, it, it developed out of that polar body that was inside the thing. And all that, see those yolks? It also developed the yolk sac. Those things are going to be uh, <coughs> providing the egg with sustenance later in life. So you have the yolk sac, and then you have the amniotic cavity, and then you actually have the embryo growing. And then around that, you have a layer of skin or cells, which is actually going to attach itself to the endometrium wall and connect itself to the, to, the, to, the, to the blood of the mother. And then from that point on, sustenance is going to be coming from the mother, <coughs> not just from the yolk sac. And also notice that the whole thing is protected by another layer called the chorion. Now, we will talk about this in more detail in the next, on the next video. But... <coughs> I just want you to understand that this implantation will happen sequentially, first with a recognition 
or cell communication between the, the cells of the endometrium wall, which have the receptors, and the receptors in the actual membrane of the, of the egg. And then that will attach itself, the endometrium wall will surround it, and inside the endometrium wall, the egg will produce this whole structure within the, the first 23 days, and where it will actually start developing a connection with the mother, in which it will start feeding itself off the mother, and that's <clears throat> what's so important about it. And there's a have and the YouTube is full of videos that actually show this in detail. And I believe I made a playlist that actually shows you that uh, in video format. So you can actually see how that works out. All right. Now, on the next video, we're actually going to talk about the uh, not just the implantation process, but also the, the whole process of the, of, the, of the development of the fetus inside the, uh, the mother. So we'll talk about that on the next video.